This is gonna be a great live stream, whether you are brand new or a seasoned keto vet. Um, my name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of four books, including my latest book called Keto Flex. I am on a mission here with Keto Camp to educate and to inspire 1 billion people on planet Earth. And today we're going to talk about ketosis. I'm going to be answering your questions. I see already a few questions that have rolled in. Let me know in the chat box down below where you're watching from. As I mentioned, I'm in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida, where it is a spectacular day here. And let me know where you're tuning in from. So first question is coming in from Janelle. Good to see Janelle on here. She is every Wednesday, typically. Janelle says, is there an approved mouthwash? Now, when it comes to mouthwash, uh, you could use, I like the one, Duterra has a good one that's an on-guard mouthwash. I like going on and off mouthwash, which is going to be useful in terms of letting your body, because here's the deal. When you take the same mouthwash over and over and over, it could change the pH balance in your mouth. So I'm a big fan of going on and off mouthwashes. And the one that I use is from Duterra. It's called On Guard. My affiliate with them, my affiliate link is ketocampoils.com. Uh, Janelle also has the question. And by the way, keep sending me your questions. I see George, I'll answer your question shortly. Um, Janelle also says, can you take bind if you're taking estrogen and progesterone on estrogen and progesterone peak days? Oh, peak days, you're not necessarily taking it. I normally eat out on these days and I wanna clean up my, with Bind. Okay, so Bind, if you don't know, is a really great product from Systemic Formulas. It's a strong binder that can be used to detoxify some toxins. So what Janelle is saying, if she eats bad and she gets some toxins, will taking Bind help, even if it's an estrogen or progesterone peak day? Bind is great. What you wanna do is follow the label. What the label shows is that you wanna take Bind about two hours away from any other medications, any other supplementation, any food, because it will essentially bind that. It's a very strong binder. It has some great ingredients, which sits in your gut and collects toxins, and it allows you to eliminate some of those toxins the next day. So uh, I think it's a great product to use. Charlotte in the house, Idaho in the house, New Mexico in the house. Uh, Summer uses chlorophyll for mouthwash, interesting. Let me answer George's question here. All right, is keto and fasting compatible with muscle gain through lifting? Any adjustments? George, great question. So what we wanna do, if you're looking to put on muscle with keto and fasting or to put on some healthy weight with keto and fasting, you wanna make sure you're getting good sleep because that's when your body's actually repairing and building up. So sleep's gonna be important. Of course, lifting health, heavy weights uh, is also gonna be important. Working on your gut could be great. So 24 hour fast is terrific for resetting your gut. So maybe throwing in a, a weekly 24 hour fast. If you're very active in strength training, you can get away with more protein on keto and, and even more carbohydrates on keto. So the approach would be more flex days, especially on the days that you're doing heavy training, you could get away with more carbohydrates. So that's what I would do for that. Uh, also do some things to work on the gut, take some, maybe you could take ion gut health, or you could do uh, some digestive enzymes, but making sure you're assimilating your nutrients could also help you put on muscle and healthy weight on keto. What is the best, what is the fastest way to get into ketosis? The best way is with keeping your carbohydrates below 50 grams and then following what I wrote about in my book, the 2222 rule. So if you want to get into ketosis, Here's how it works. Track how many carbs you're currently having without any changes. Use an app like, I like Chronometer. If you go to chronometer.com slash keto camp, you can download it for free. But get an idea of how many carbs you're having. The average American, I'm telling you, is eating about 300 grams of carbs per day. So what we wanna do is gradually decrease your total carbs to get that below 50 grams. At the same time, you wanna follow the 2222 rule that I speak about a lot. I got this from my mentor, Dr. Daniel Pomp Dan Pompa, who wrote the foreword, and I read about this in the book. So for those new to keto or wanting to get back into ke to ketosis, use this rule. Every day you want to consume two tablespoons of olive oil or avocado oil, two tablespoons of grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee, two tablespoons of MCT oil or coconut oil, and then two teaspoons of sea salt. So that'll get you in ketosis. Now, some other things you can do there's some research that shows C8, which is a caprylic acid. It's an MCT oil. 
C8 could actually help enhance your body's uh, capability to produce ketones. So you could put that in your coffee. Uh, caffeine has also been shown to enhance fatty acid utilization. So that could also help get your ketones up. So maybe some coffee in the morning with C8 MCT oil. Uh, if you're already metabolically flexible, you could do some fasting. Uh, fasting is a great way, a uh, quick way to get back into ketosis uh, so long as you're metabolically flexible. So if anybody's struggling, you got kicked out, though, that's the protocol for you. You could also do some activity like a workout in the fasted state or some uh, car cardio in the fasted state. All of these methods will help you do get back into ketosis, the great land of ketosis that I call it. Maui in the house, good to see Maui in the house here. Uh, let's see, is beetroot juice or carrot juice okay to be in ketosis? Uh, depends on how much you have. Typically, if you have too much beetroot juice or carrot juice, the it could essentially knock you out of ketosis. So you might have to do a, an experiment to see if that's happening to you. I'm a big fan of beets, I'm a big fan of carrots. You might wanna reserve that for a keto flex day which is a higher healthy carb day. Uh, so one says to reset your gut, should you do a water fast? And to be clear, this means just water, right? No supplements or apple cider vinegar. The reason I say a water fast is great for the gut is many reasons. Number one, when you think about how long it takes to digest a meal, I interviewed Dr. Zach Bush, triple board medical doctor on my Keto Camp podcast last year amazing episode. If you didn't listen to that, go listen to that. And he was referencing a study from the University of Virginia. And this is going to blow your mind. What they did is they took these college students and they wanted to track how long it took to digest a standard American diet meal. So in the case of this study, they took these college students, keep in mind, college students are younger. The younger you are, typically the faster your digestion, the older you are, the slower your digestion gets. So they were college students. They should have fast digestion. They gave them 800 calories of mellow mushroom pizza, which let's face it, standard American diet. <laughs> and they wanted to track how long did it take to digest that meal? It took about 14 to 16 hours to digest that meal. And if you're not fasting for 14 to 16 hours on a consistent basis, what's going to happen? You're going to overwhelm your digestive system. In the book, Keto Flux, I gave an analogy and here's the analogy. It's like this corporate worker Sandra clocks into her job. She works nine to five and she puts in eight hours of work. It's now 5 p.m. She is exhausted. She put in eight hours of really good work. She's walking to her car, getting ready to go home and rest and recover. And as she enters her car, she gets a phone call, phone call from her boss saying, Sandra, we need you to come back in to the office. We have a project that just came in. We need you to work another five hours. So she puts in another five hours of work She's exhausted. She's now walking to her car, 10 p.m. at night, ready to go home and just go to sleep. She gets that same phone call from her boss. Sandra, we need you to come back in for another five hours. Imagine this happening to Sandra over and over and over. She's going to be destroyed. This is similar to what's happening to your digestive system when you don't give it a break. So fasting is one of the best ways to give your digestive system a break, let it reset, let it repair itself because it takes massive amounts of energy, resources, and blood flow to process a meal. And when you're not eating, AKA fasting, now you have all that energy, all the resources being directed to healing, healing the gut. <clears throat> Another thing, uh, I wrote about this in the book, uh, research from MIT showed 24-hour water fast strengthened the intestinal stem cells of mice. So is fasting just water only? Yes, that's the best way to maximize your fast. You want to have water and sea salt, one. Apple cider vinegar is totally fine during a fast as well and actually could help support it. Other supplementations that have herbs in it, I would stay away. I would stay away from antioxidants during a fast and stick with just minerals, apple cider vinegar, and water. That's the best way to maximize your fast and to heal your gut. That's very important for somebody, if some of you watching right now who have some digestive issues, which are very, very common. Acid reflux, bloating, gas, just don't feel good. It sits in your gut. Incorporating intermittent fasting is absolutely, absolutely essential to repairing your gut. I also love a product called Ion Gut Restore 
Dr. Zach Bush developed it. I take it. I give it to my dog. It helps close your tight junctions and it helps deal with all of the herbicides and pesticides that are being sprayed all over our crops. You also want to stick to organic foods as close as much as possible. Of course, that's going to depend on your resources. So those are some things for you. You could also take some digestive enzymes for the gut as well. Okay, um, there's a question here on TikTok. It's crazy, Jay. I've hit a plateau. I'm doing OMAD, which is one meal a day, and been told should not do OMAD, OMAD because it's causing a low metal metabolism in your thoughts. I like OMAD. I don't think it's a good idea to do that every single day. Your body will go into preservation mode when you're just eating one meal a day, one meal a day for weeks and months and years. I'm a big fan of mixing things up. So if you hit a plateau, you want to make sure you mix things up. What does a great personal trainer do for his clients? Mixes up the routine. If, he, if the personal trainer has the client doing high reps um, with lighter weight, then it's time to do lower reps with heavier weight. Let's relate this to your plateau with keto and fasting. If you're doing the same fasting schedule over and over and over, it's time to maybe do less fasting or maybe time to do a block fast. If you're eating the same keto foods over and over and over, it's time to eat different foods, right? Jimmy Moore, good to see you, brother. Jimmy Moore knows all about that. So if you hit a plateau, make sure you do that. You mix things up and that could help break through. You also want to revisit the fundamentals of health sleep, stress, movement, your thoughts. Your thoughts could get you results or your thoughts could sabotage you. All right, your thoughts build up health or your thoughts create disease. And if you think that's a little woo-woo and this guy's talking crazy, there's actually signs to back it up. I interviewed Dr. Bruce Lipton on the Keto Camp Podcast and he has research. He's a world-renowned stem cell biologist. He wrote the book, The Biology of Belief. Go listen to that book. Go read that book. It is incredible. So here's what your thoughts do for you. Your thoughts are a frequency. It's a sound wave that actually connect to the receptor sites that sit on your cells, that are integrated into your cells, that are called integral membrane proteins. A healthy thought, an abundant thought, a loving thought can penetrate your cells, cross through the membrane, and signal to your DNA to produce a specific protein that could be a healthy protein, building health. But if it's a toxic thought, if it's a hateful thought, if it's a negative thought, that could do the same thing, but that protein could lead to inflammation and disease. So you gotta make sure you're mastering those thoughts. The average person is thinking 60,000 thoughts per day. And most of those thoughts are negative stinking thinking. That's right, Laura. So I want everybody to write this in the, in the chat box, in the comment section. If your thinking is stinking, your dreams are shrinking. If your thinking is stinking, your dreams are shrinking. Your health dreams, your financial dreams, your relationship dreams, whatever it is, master your thoughts. Dr. Wayne Dyer said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, okay? That's important. So make sure you don't underestimate the power of your thoughts. Our greatest power as a human being is the ability to choose your thoughts. Okay, give you an example. Yesterday, you might have seen this, you might have not seen this, but uh, I, I posted a video on my TikTok and Instagram about the benefits of fasting and why we don't want to snack all the time and how if you're eating every two to three hours, you're going to age yourself faster. Okay, there was a bodybuilder named Kai who posted that on his Instagram. He has like 6 million followers. And then there was another gentleman called uh, PhD who posted a video really coming at me, really strong negativity, bully vibes. And I'd messaged him back and forth. We had conversations via voice messenger. And, you know, when that happens, I could respond with hate. I could be a bully because they're calling me this keto king and or I could choose my thoughts and, and shake it off, shake it off like Taylor Swift says, right? So that's your power. It doesn't matter what anybody says to you. The only thing that matters is what you think as a result. And if you're competent with what you're doing, the proof is in the pudding. Competent gives you confidence, right? So I want you to have that mindset for everything that happens to you. Because life is going to throw you punches. 
All right? There's a story about a donkey in a well. This is going to be a perfect example about how life throws you punches, but you want to just Taylor Swift, shake it off, shake it off. There was a, a small village with uh, several donkeys and there was a well in this small village. And one of the donkeys, an older donkey, ended up falling into the well. And the villagers were, were panicking. They were, they were thinking, how are we going to get the donkey out of the well? They were finding out, strategizing, what are we going to do to get the donkey out? Hours later, they determined there's no way to get the donkey out. And they thought, well, the donkey's old. They've been thinking about closing this well for a while because it's also an old well that's not really working. But that donkey was screaming, screaming at, at the bottom of that well. So they did, all agreed, we got to just close this well and sacrifice the donkey. So they all grabbed shovels. And they were dumping dirt into the well, dumping dirt with the shovel, just getting dirt, dumping it. And they heard the donkey just screaming, screaming even louder. And they just kept dumping dirt, dumping dirt. All of a sudden, the donkey is silent. And they're just keeping dump. They keep dumping the dirt. The next thing you know, the donkey climbs out of the well and runs away. They kept dumping dirt and they built some ground for that donkey to stand on. So when life throws you dirt, when people call you out, when people are trying to bully you, when you have stinking thinking, just let it shake it off, shake it off. Taylor Swift, be that donkey and you're going to land into the great land of freedom and it's going to be so liberating. So Summer, I see that. You're, if you're thinking is thinking, your dreams are shrinking. Carol, Juan, Monica, Summer, Becky, I love that. I love that so much. What's the most effective way to fast on a weekly basis? I like an 18-6 schedule for most people uh, on, on most days, meaning 18 hours out of a 24-hour period, you're in the fasted state having water, sea salt, electrolytes, and then you have a six-hour eating window, and you're going to eat ideally keto-friendly meals within those six hours. So that could be like 12 to 6 p.m. eating window, and then fasting outside of that. I want you to keep in mind that intermittent fasting is not necessarily about eating less. It's about eating less often. If you want to still get your macros in and your calories and you just have it within a certain window that's how the body is designed to live feast famine cycles we are hardwired genetically to practice fasting every single one of our ancestors did it they also did keto nothing new about any of those so if anybody comes at you saying keto is a fad say no it's a fact keto is not a diet it's a metabolic process and it's been around since humans have existed Monica, I'm glad you enjoyed the story. LDH, I'm glad you enjoyed the story about the donkey. Let me get us some more questions here. I see David in the house from London. Good to see you, David. Uh, bee pollen is great. I like, I like uh, bee pollen. It's great support for the immune system. You could get it. Uh, Beekeepers Naturals makes a good one. No stinking thinking. That's right. Um, and I mentioned sleep. Sleep is going to be important for you, for anybody who wants to be healthy and wants to get into ketosis and get amazing fat loss results, because here's the truth. Your body is doing incredible things during sleep. For example, delta sleep, which is called deep sleep, that's when your brain is shrinking in size and you have this cerebral spinal fluid that is actually going over the brain, flushing out toxins, accumulated, accumulated plaques and proteins, all during sleep. You're also burning fat. During delta sleep, you have growth hormone being increased. You're repairing muscle, building back muscle. Uh, and then REM sleep is also important. REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep. That's when, when you're taking short-term memory and processing it for long-term memory. So if you're having issues with your sleep and you hit a plateau with your weight loss, this could be the reason why. There's some studies on Scientific American and on PubMed that show when you get chronic when you're chronically sleep deprived, which is categorized as seven hours or less of sleep, you're going to have higher levels of cortisol the next morning. Cortisol, of course, is your stress hormone. Not bad unless it's chronically elevated. Higher levels of glucose and insulin because cortisol, because glucose and insulin follows cortisol. Also, the studies show that you're going to have higher levels of ghrelin, your hunger hormone. So you're hungrier, willpower re reserves are depleted. And the studies also show lower levels of ghrelin, the satiety hormone. Sleep is essential. As a matter of fact, I'm doing a free webinar this week on sleep. And if you want to learn more about sleep and how to get the best night of sleep ever with some practical tips 
and why your mattress could be an issue, then you could sign up for the free webinar. It's ketocampsleep.com, ketocampsleep.com. There's some, a few spots for this week. It's a 100% free webinar. Just go to ketocampsleep.com. Uh, I am doing my YouTube uh, platform here and, and Instagram and Facebook. Thanks. But should 18-6 fasting be done for seven days a week? No, I would mix it up. If you're doing 18-6 five days, maybe you throw in a 24-hour fast a couple other days. Maybe you uh, increase that to a block fast. Maybe you do days where you don't fast, right? Listen to your body. The mo if you get poor sleep, you want to make sure you're not doing much fasting, okay? If you have high stress, you don't want to do a lot of fasting. If you're a woman and you have your men menstrual cycle coming up, you don't want to do a lot of fasting. Fasting is a stress, a positive stress called hormesis, which could get you positive results. But if you already have so much stress, it's going to be too much for your body to handle. So if you feel really good, you got a good night of sleep, you're mastering your stress, then maybe it's a good day to do a 24 hour fast. But if your sleep is not good and you're stressed out, that might be a day where you don't want to do too much fasting. Um, Karen Boyle, first question, tips or link to find a low carb in my area near Pittsburgh. Huh. I don't know anybody off the top of my head, but we work online with our, our platform, Keto Camp Academy. So if you care and you want to work with me and get my, my system, uh, you could learn more over at ketocampacademy.com. Antonio, ciao. Andrea says, I was, the, I was sad for the donkey, then he was saved. Yes, love the story. I'm glad, I'm glad it ended up being a positive story. Um, okay, good question, Lee Shepard. Where else in NM, I'm assuming you're saying North Miami because you're from Miami like me, uh, Whole Foods to buy pasture-raised number four animal proteins. I get most of my proteins from Belcampo. Uh, ketocampmeat.com is where it goes to their page. And then I have a coupon code with them for 15% off, which is ketocamp. So belcampo.com, B-E-L-C-A-M-P-O. But uh, ketocampmeat.com is where it goes to that, that special deal. I am on TikTok uh, at the Benazadi. Golden milk latte. Yes. Golden milk latte. Jilly, good question. And then I'm going to get to yours, my friend Don. Um, golden milk latte is great. I use the one from Organifi. I actually drink it at night. It helps me calm down and relax. It has, uh, I believe it has some reishi mushroom. So I take my golden milk latte usually after dinner. That's what I have it. Why do I get more hungry when I'm underslept? That's exactly it. Because when you're underslept, your ghrelin hormone, which is your hunger, hor hunger hormone is elevated. And then your satiety hormone leptin is decreased. So that's why you're hungrier. Me too. Man, nothing affects me more than a poor night of sleep. I could eat like crap. I could be sedentary and not exercise. But if I don't get good sleep, that's going to affect me more. You're going to have higher levels of ghrelin. So that's what's going on. You're welcome, Jilly. My pleasure. Ben, what's your thoughts about CBD products which help sleep? I like CBD. A uh, big fan of CBD from a quality company. So it could help with sleep. I take CBD often. If you want to learn more about the one I, I'm using right now, drphilipcbd.com slash ketocamp. But CBD has been great. I interviewed my friend Devin Burke. We talked about the benefits of CBD on my ketocamp podcast. It could be anti-inflammatory. It could just promote restfulness and sleep. Uh, so I'm a big fan of it. Just got to make sure it's from a quality source, a full hemp or a full spectrum CBD. Other than online places, there is a place in Fort Lauderdale, the Yellow Green farmer's market. You could get some organic grass-fed quality beef there. Uh, yellow green farmer's market in Fort Lauderdale. All my knowledge. I've been on the keto diet, haven't lost any weight yet. So been on the keto diet, haven't lost any weight yet. So what I would recommend is make sure you're not eating any bad fats on keto, inflammatory fats, which could prevent weight loss. Those are going to include the vegetable oils and industrial seed oils. Those are canola oil, soybean oil, cottonseed oil, safflower oil, grapeseed oil, rice bran oil, and peanut oil. Uh, that will prevent you from losing weight because they're highly inflammatory. Instead, switch over to more stable fats, grass-fed butter, uh, avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, MCT oil, grass-fed beef. So make sure you're getting that. 
Uh, and then make sure your sleep is good and your stress is good. And maybe you just want to switch up your keto foods and or add intermittent fasting into the mix. These are ways for you to, to lose the weight. But I wouldn't focus on weight loss. I would focus on non-scale victories. Maybe get some lab work done. Look at your inflammatory markers. Get some measurements done. Get your body fat percentage done. Are your clothes fitting better? Do you have more energy? These non-scale victories are important. What I tell my members of my Keto Camp Academy, don't focus on the scale. Focus on health. As you get healthy, you'll lose the weight. We don't lose weight to get healthy. We get healthy to lose weight. Focus on reducing inflammation. That's what I would recommend for you. My 19 year old works overnight. What would you recommend for her to take? She's taking melatonin in the morning when she gets home from work, she works overnight. That's tough. You know, at the end of the day, we're gonna want her to switch her, uh, him or her, to, uh, she, switch her, her schedule to a more of a healthier schedule, melatonin in the morning. Yeah, I mean, do what you can for her to get sleep during the day. Uh, CBD might help, but that's gonna be a, a tough thing to overcome. Very, very tough thing to overcome. Jilly says, I was eating peanut oil and didn't lose weight, but I found that's one I shouldn't be eating and I started to lose weight afterwards when you removed it. Awesome, Jilly. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Do I take pure form omegas during a fast? Does it interfere with fasting or autophagy? Does not interfere with fasting or autophagy. I take pure form during a fast. You should be good to go, Summer. Uh, of course, the best thing to do is to take it during your eating window because you might lose some digestive benefits taking it during a fast, but it's not going to negate autophagy or do anything like that. Coconut butter is also good. Agreed. Agreed. Next question. I'm having daily heartburn for a week. Never had it before. No doctor because I can't find the right fit. Waiting on HCL pills because I, I think it's low acid. I've been carrying, I've been carnivore eight months in OMAD. Don't stuff when I eat. Yeah, so what you can do, practice more intermittent fasting. A 24-hour fast could help with that. Apple cider vinegar could help with that. Um, HCL could help as well. When you eat your food, make sure you are chewing frequently. You're present. You're not eating in a stressful state. All these things could help with acid reflux. I have a video on my Keto Camp YouTube channel on how to overcome acid reflux with keto and fasting. And I actually brought in my, my fiance Natasha on that video and she shared her stories as well. I live in South Africa and I'm looking for electrolytes, but they all contain sucralose. I take magnesium every day and sea salt in my water. Does apple cider vinegar have potassium in it? I don't know if apple cider vinegar has potassium in it. I'm not sure. You might have to do a Google search. But what are some alternatives to electrolytes that have sucralose in it? Sea salt. Get a quality pink sea salt, Celtic sea salt, Himalayan sea salt. That could get you the benefits of getting your um, electrolytes in without any of those additives like sucralose or Splenda or anything like that. So Ben, why did my skin start to clear after I got off fish oil? Well, fish oil is not good for you. Fish oil is rancid. It's estimated that 83% of fish oil is rancid, but also fish oil has a lot of problems. Uh, Brian Peskin, MIT researcher, he says that fish oil could actually end up in the epidermis, which could cause issues with skin issues, uh, bruising, also nosebleeds, et cetera. So the fact that you got off of it showed what, what that did to improve your skin. So um, smart move, not a big fan of fish oil. I take pure form, Andrea seed oils, uh, systemic formulas, Vista one and two, those are much, much better options. Before I get to more questions here, if you're getting any value here on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button so the YouTube algorithm knows you're getting value here. And then if you're brand new to the channel, subscribe. We are live every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we are, cranking out content all the time. Why does apple cider vinegar give me diarrhea? Bad one, everything else works. I'm not sure, but you might wanna check if the supplements, like the capsules for apple cider vinegar, vinegar do the same thing or if it's just the liquid. Jason, when do you cut back on the fats to create a calor caloric deficit on keto? I don't focus too much on caloric deficits, but here's what, when I recommend cutting back on the fat and prioritizing protein after 14 days. And I know Jason, you've been at this for more than 14 days, so it might be a good time to do that. 
Prioritize your protein. Have about 40 to 50 grams of animal-based protein at, at your meals, which is about eight to 10 ounces. And then only get fat that's natural with the protein sources. So after 14 days is when I recommend that. Jen from Edward, Prince Edward Island in Canada. I'm vegan and I'm wondering if I can continue eating jackfruit in brine. Uh, I'm, I think that might kick you out of ketosis. You might want to check your glucose after eating it about an hour after and your ketones. The only way to know is to test. So that's what I would recommend for you. Just test to see what it's doing to your glucose and ketone numbers. Prebiotics, inulin and FLS are good for keto. I like prebiotics. I'm a big fan of getting prebiotics from fermented veggies. Kimchi is a great way to get prebiotics. I also like garlic and leeks. I also like tempeh and natto, which are vegan sources of protein. Uh, I have a video that I just released on my Keto Camp YouTube channel, five veggies you should eat all the time on keto. And number five is fermented vegetables. Vegetables. Does intermittent fasting on a keto diet for a type two diabetic person have morning glucose levels high because of the rate of gluconeogenesis? Morning glucose is typically high for most people. It's called the dawn effect. I would recommend instead of looking at that morning glucose, but see what happens throughout the day. Is your glucose dropping and ketones rising? That's going to be a more accurate assessment. As your body is healing and you're reversing your insulin resistance and reversing your type diabetes, you'll see better morning readings. But I wouldn't put everything, all eggs in one basket for that morning reading. I would look throughout the entire day. Six months now on low carb, got hair loss after three months, how to fix it. Support the thyroid, have more protein, have more keto flex days, which are higher healthy carb days. It is normal to lose hair if you lost weight. That's very, very common. So get your protein up, get your B vitamins up. Watch my video on my YouTube channel on how to deal with hair loss on keto. If you can't stand apple cider vinegar, then get the capsules. I like the apple cider vinegar pills. I use the one from Paleo Valley, paleovalley.com. We have a 15% off coupon code with them, which is KETOCAMP15 at checkout. Oi, Liliana, good to see you on here. Would you recommend breaking a fast with bone broth no matter the length of the fast? I like breaking the fast with bone broth for sure. If it's a block longer fast, three or more days, or even a 16 hour fast, that's great. Both are going to be great. Just make sure it's high quality bone broth. Bone broth is usually a good go-to for breaking the fast. Muhammad, hi. When should we do our workout during fasting? I always do morning. I always do it in the morning. The only time that I have my stomach is empty. Is it good? Look, I personally love exercise in the fasted state. I feel better when I work out in the fasted state. If you want more fat loss, work out in the fasted state. If you want to build more muscle, have a meal before your workout. I think it's a good idea to mix it up. Some days I will do exercise in the fasted state. Some days I won't. I think mixing it up is, is great. But I personally love fasted workouts. Amanda, good to see you. Uh, I like to work out in the fasted in the morning. Speaking of which, I like to add pre-workout. I have Redmond's Relight pre-workout. Does this break my fast? If it's the Redmond's that's unflavored, no, it doesn't break your fast. If it's the Redmond's that is flavored, you got to see if it's giving you a glucose response. Um, it's hard to test that if you're taking it before a workout. You have to test that on days you don't work out an hour after to see or 30 minutes after to see if it's giving you a glucose response. I think it's fine for most people to take it. Some I'll take sometimes Redmond's Relight during a fast or excuse me, before a workout in the fasted state. But see what it's doing to your glucose is the best answer I could give you on that. Okay, what other questions do we have here? All right, doctor told me to stop keto yesterday due to elevated LDL. Let's talk about that. LDL, low density lipoprotein has been called the bad cholesterol. But LDL is split up into two different segments. So you have the small and sticky particles, that's the bad. Then you have large and fluffy. Ask your doctor to get a test called the NMR test, which is looking at the particle sizes because you could have high total LDL, but that doesn't really mean much. You got to look at, are the small and sticky ones high? Then it might be an issue. 
But also look at your inflammatory markers. It's not just your lipid panel, which is important, but it's also your inflammatory markers, C-reactive protein, homocysteine, fibrinogen, fasting insulin, A1C. You want to get a full picture here on whether or not uh, it's an issue or not. Also look at your HDL and triglycerides. What you want to do is get your ratio. Take your total trigly triglycerides divided by HDL. And if it's under two, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So it's more complex than just looking at total LDL and saying, oh, keto is doing me harm. It's looking at everything that I mentioned. It's more, more of a comprehensive approach. High quality bone broth. I like kettle and fire. You could get them at Whole Foods. Uh, you could get it online. Um, kettleandfire.com. We have a coupon code with them. I believe it's Keto Camp as well. So kettle and fire is, is terrific. Blanca. Hi, Ben. I'm 49 years old and I do CrossFit five days a week. Can you help me out with the, my, what my macros should be? Uh, if you want to stay in ketosis, then 50 grams or less of total carbs. If you're very active like CrossFit is, then you could get away with a little bit more. It's going to be, you're going to have to test your glucose and ketones to see what's going on. Uh, I would prioritize protein, Blanca, especially since you're doing CrossFit. So get at least 40 to 50 grams of high quality animal based protein at all of your meals. And you might want to increase that even more. So I had to focus on protein. I get enough sleep and then you might have some more flexibility some, for more carbs on your CrossFit days. Yeah. Making homemade is even better, Liliana. I just don't do it, <laughs> but if you can make your homemade uh, bone broth, that'll be even better. Tolu, good to see you. Hi, Ben. I started carnivore beginning of this month, August. Me too. And I intend to do it for 30 days, hopefully to help with my weight loss. Just wanted to ask if I can have my Bulletproof coffee. If you have a Bulletproof coffee, that would be considered a level three carnivore. So there's four different levels to carnivore. Level three, you could have butter and coffee. So I'm doing carnivore and I have Bulletproof coffee during carnivore from time to time. So for me, it works. Does, hey, Nick, uh, does Element break a fast? Just started using that. No, it shouldn't. I mean, if it has, I'm not sure if it has like stevia or artificial sweeteners in it. You might want to just check your glucose right before you have it and 30 minutes after. If you see a raise of more than five points, then it might be, but I don't think it does for most people. Gabby uh, says, uh, 381 pounds, obese, insulin resistant. How long should I eat 50 total grams of carbs for? And how should I do a flex day? That's going to depend on your lab markers. Work with your practitioner to see if things are going in the right direction. If you have insulin resistance and you have, and you say you're obese, then you might want to stay in ketosis a little bit longer, do more fasting strategies. And then flex days could, could be higher protein days, just a caloric surplus. That could be done for somebody who's insulin resistant. Any MCT brand you recommend? I like Brain Octane Oil from Bulletproof. That's a good one. You get that on Amazon. So you recommend eating keto and carnivore at different times? Yes, I do, DYI, because uh, although when you're doing carnivore, you're in ketosis, so it's the same thing. But I don't, I don't like carnivore for months unless somebody has severe autoimmune. So in my book, Keto Flex, which you all could get today, ketoflexbook.com, Pillar three is about carnivore. It's a 30 day carnivore protocol. Me and my keto camp academy members are doing carnivore for the month of August. I'm on day, we started on Monday. I'm on, I'm on day three right now. So I do 30 days here, 40 days here, and then back to keto flexing. And then 30 days here, 30 days there, back to keto flexing. That's my approach. Cream of tartar. Yep, Kim, cream of tartar is a great source of potassium. Have that during your eating window. I like cream of tartar. I'm carnivore day three, says Liliana, having meat, black coffee, chicken, fish, and lamb. That's great. I know Becky is uh, part of it as well. Yeah, we. I feel great when I do carnivore. Carnivore is terrific. It's a great way to get these anti-nutrients out of the body. I'm going to answer one more question here, and then I'm going to call it 
quits. By the way, if you didn't sign up for the free webinar on sleep, you could still sign up. KetoCampSleep.com. KetoCampSleep.com. Hello, my friend. I would like to ask you, after two years of keto, I lost 40 kilograms, but I feel kidney pain recently. Do you think this is because of the keto diet? Thank you. I'm from Dubai. I don't know. Um, if you did a lot of exogenous ketones that are like uh, ketone salts, maybe having high quantities of that could affect the kidneys. But maybe you do uh, some lab work with your doctor. Go look at your kidney health. I don't know if that's what did it. So I can't say. But thank you for watching for from Dubai. All right, last question here from 11187867. Is keto safe for skinny people? Yeah, it can be. I don't do keto because I want to lose weight. I do keto because of the anti-inflammatory benefits. I do keto because of how I feel. I feel freaking great. I do it because I'm mentally sharp. So as long as you're having enough protein and you're getting good sleep, uh, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. So it can be done for skinny people. We're looking at keto as not a weight loss tool, but a health tool. You can actually build healthy weight on keto too. So I hope that helps. If this was valuable to you, please hit the thumbs up button here and please um, let me know, uh, let YouTube know if this is helpful by hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm live with you. I really hope this is beneficial today. Hopefully, I'll see you on my sleep webinar coming up called ketocampsleep.com. And stay tuned for some more videos coming out and go subscribe to the Keto Camp podcast on all podcast platforms. All right, have an amazing day.